Hello friends, my name is Kalpesh and welcome to my YouTube channel Automotive Crafts. In this video, I am going to discuss about brakes. In majority of the vehicles, you can observe that drum brake is utilized as a part of the brake system. The drum brake has an advantage that it has a uh, higher brake factor as compared to the disc brake. But in comparison of the brake torque performance, the drum brake has slightly lower performance as compared to the disc brake. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the brake factor, uh, mechanical assistance for the drum brake especially. So let's discuss about the brake factor. Brake factor, it is a mechanical advantage in drum brake to minimize the required actuation effort. The brake factor, it is the mechanical advantage in the drum brakes to minimize to minimize the required actuation effort. Now, to understand this brake factor phenomena in the construction of this drum brake as shown in the figure, you can observe the two brake shoes A and B. This both brake shoes, they are pivoted at the bottom at this point. These, these are the pivot points. The actuation effort to apply the brake to the vehicle, it is applied here and it is distributed on both brake shoes in terms of P. So, PA it indicates the actuation effort. The shaded portion, it is the brake lining. Brake lining. Apart from this actuation effort, the friction force, uh, you can consider it, it is equals to the normal reaction times the coefficient of friction. Normal reaction times the coefficient of friction. So, this indicates the friction force. This Na, it indicates the normal reaction produced due to the brake force applied at this surface. In this case, we considered the rotation of the wheel or the rotation of the drum, it is in the clockwise direction in, in this direction. So, automatically when we applied the actuation effort or we applied the brake force at so due to this actuation force this both shoes they will tend to move apart towards the drum. Due to this movement and considering the direction of the rotation of the drum the shoe A it becomes a leading shoe while the shoe B, it becomes a trailing shoe. In this case, in case of a sh uh, right hand side uh, brake shoe, why it is known as a leading shoe? Because considering the rotation of the drum, this friction force try to drag this, try to drag this leading shoe in the same direction. And braking force applied at this point, it will be higher compared to the actuation force. So that's why uh, this shoe, it is known as a leading shoe. And Likewise, we can understand about the trailing shoe. In this case, due to the, considering the rotation of the drum, the brake force applied at this point, it will try to throw this brake shoe apart from this contact point. Okay. So, actual braking force generated at this point, it is less and that's why it is known as the trailing shoe. With the help of this fundamental, let's try to understand the brake factor. From this figure, we are considering this uh, this system it is in equilibrium condition and we are considering the moment about the pivot of shoe A. So about the pivot point we are considering moment of shoe A. So this E into PA actuation force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot point it is E. So E into PA it is in the clockwise direction so consider positive plus mu into Na this friction force this friction force mu into Na multiplied by N the perpendicular distance from the pivot point N and another force that, that is considered here it is the normal reaction which produces the counterclockwise moment about this pivot point and it has a perpendicular distance from the pivot point it is equals to M so M into Na and the negative sign indicates the counterclockwise clockwise direction of the moment produced must be equal to Z. From this equation, we can write this term for shoe A. Na it is equals to PA into E divided by M minus mu N. And if we are considering the moment about the pivot point for this shoe B, then in the same manner we can produce the 
equation for the normal direction produced for the shoe B that is PA into E divided by M plus mu M. By observing this equation we can say that considering the same actuation effort the, the denominator in the leading shoe it is less as compared to the denominator in the trailing shoe. So the normal direction produced at normal direction produced for shoe A it is quite higher than the normal direction produced for the shoe B indicates the assistance in the braking which is known as a servo action for the brake. Friction force on the brake both brake shoes can be defined as it is the normal direction times the coefficient of friction mu. So F for shoe A you can write F A it is equals to mu into Na and for shoe B you can write F B it is equals to mu into N B. Now, with the help of this two equation this two equation we can simplify the equation we can write the friction force equation in terms of actuation effort so F A it is equals to P A into mu into E divided by M minus mu N likewise you can write the friction force equation for the shoe B the only difference in this both equation it is the uh, plus and minus sign in, in the denominator now this FA divided by PA, this FA divided by PA, actually it indicates, actually it indicates the mechanical advantage. This because mechanical advantage can be defined as the output produced divided by the input provided. Okay. So this friction force we can consider as an output force, and the PA it is the actual. Uh, application force which is the input so this ratio it is known as a mechanical advantage so uh, this mechanical advantage can be right in terms of mu into e divided by m minus mu n and for the trailing shoe we can write fb divided by pa mechanical advantage for the trailing shoe it is mu into e divided by m plus mu n this indicates the mechanical advantage for the leading shoe and the trailing shoe respectively with the help of brake force we can also calculate the brake torque for each shoes so here tl it is the brake torque for the leading shoe which is equals to fa into r and likewise we can identify the brake torque for the trailing shoe which is fb into r and now we have a values for fa and fb now the important one is the braking torque developed by leading shoe greater than the brake torque developed by the training shoe. We can observe the denominator for the both FB and FA and with the help of this denominator we can say that because braking force uh, in case of a leading shoe is greater than the braking, uh, braking force generated in the trailing shoe and that's why the brake torque developed by leading shoe is greater than the brake torque developed by the training shoe the moment produced by the friction force on the leading shoe acts to rotate against the drum and increase the friction force developed. This is known as the self servo action. So in case of leading shoes we are able to get the self servo action or you can uh, say the mechanical higher mechanical advantage while applying braking and this is the reason uh, why the majority of the manufacturers they are preferring the two leading shoe type brakes usually. This servo action can be characterized by the brake factor. As I said, this servo action can be termed as a brake factor. This indicates the brake factor, mechanical advantage. In the leading shoe, if mu gets too large, so this is the equation for the mu uh, leading shoe that we have considered in our case. So, F shoe A, it is a leading shoe and this indicates the mechanical advantage for uh, the shoe A. So, in leading shoe, if mu gets too large, if the mu gets too large, then brake factor goes to the infinity. If mu gets too large, then this denominator, the value of, for the mu n, it tends to becomes e uh, equal to the m, and that's why this denominator it becomes zero and the whole value for the brake factor it leads towards the infinity and if 
such kind of a case occurs then brake will lock shoe b is a trailing shoe configuration so the friction force acts to reduce the application force this we have already discussed in while discussing about the leading shoe and the trailing shoe so, brake factor is much lower and higher application force are required in case of a trailing shoe if we compare the brake torque with respect to the time to stop the vehicles for drum brake for drum brake and the disc brake then we can observe in this plots in by comparing this bo both plot we can say that uh, in case of a drum brake where we can observe a small sag in this plot this indicates the reduction in the brake torque at cer certain intermediate time while we are applying a brake and we intend to stop the vehicle this sag or the reduction in the brake torque it is quite less in case of a disc brake and this is the reason why ma uh, majority of the manufacturers they are emphasizing on the disc brake okay. the brake torque performance of disc brake is comparatively better than the drum brake this sag produced in the drum brake <coughs> it is the result of the heat dissipated during the braking and the velocity of uh, the vehicle with the help of this plot we can understand that that the brake torque it is the function of actuation force velocity of the vehicle or the wheels and the temperature during the brake application some heat is generated inside the system we are considering this heat liberated in terms of temperature so torque normally increases the linearly with the actuation force applied the torque increases as velocity increases and torque decreases as the temperature increases because as the temperature increases the coefficient of friction mu it changes and due to this mu reduction in the mu we are getting less brake torque okay so we can say that torque decreases as the temperature increases the disc brake shows less torque variation during the stopping so in drum brake it is difficult to maintain the proper balance between front and rear braking effort during maximum braking now let's try to understand the brake force torque produced by the brake act to generate the brake force at the ground and uh, the brake force at ground we can calculate with the help of the brake torque with the help of this equation the brake force it is equals to brake torque minus the rotational inertia this is the inertia loss divided by the radius of the wheel in this case if we are considering the wheel lockup condition wheel lockup condition that means the angular acceleration complete angular acceleration of wheel it becomes zero okay this alpha w it becomes zero due to this the i alpha term it becomes zero and in this condition in the condition of lock up of the wheels we can say the brake force at the crown we can calculate with the help of the simple equation that is brake torque divided by the radius of wheel it's very simple so this is what about the uh, brake factor for the drum brake and comparison of brake torque with respect to the disc brake thank you thank you guys thank you for watching my video if you like my video don't forget to subscribe this channel and click on the bell button so you will get notification whenever i upload something thank you